I'm Chris Metherill, I'm the County Recorder for North Northumberland, Blanche, and the Natural History Society has asked me if I would make some short films about the sorts of wildflowers that you can see at this time of year. Uh, we're restricted of course, most people are staying at home or staying very close to home, uh, and so I thought I'd show you some fairly common plants. Today we're going to look at wetland plants, or plants that will grow in damp places anyway. You don't have to find a pond, a damp corner of a park somewhere next to a stream, somewhere where there's been a bit of a flood, and these sorts of plants will be growing there. And here's one of my favourites. This is uh, marsh marigold, or king cup, and it's a beautiful plant related to um, uh, buttercups. It's got five bright yellow petals just like the buttercups you hold under your chin. This one has rather kidney shaped leaves, that's typical of, of marsh marigold. Um, it's got two, well, many English names. I like to call it king cup because uh, I think it's such a regal plant. Calpha palustris in that. And behind me <coughs> is another plant which we saw, we've seen before, which is this tiny little yellow chap, and this is opposite leaved golden saxifrage. Just call it golden saxifrage, I think. And it's this plant here growing next to these stinging nettles, which I'm going to try and not uh, sting myself on. And <coughs> I have here my trusty hand lens, and um, these plants really come alive if you have a hand lens to look at them. Uh, and I'm going to pick one because there's a lot of them. And if I look at them under my hand lens, I can see that what's making them yellow and golden on top is that each little flower has four golden yellow petals with darker reddy brown um, anthers, that's the male parts dispersed the pollen. And close to they're really lovely. And so if you can have a look at them with a lens or even just a magnifying glass, they really do come alive when you, you look at them in that way. Right, let's move up the slope. <coughs> okay. Okay, so now I'm moving up the slope a bit, so it's getting slightly, slightly dry, but it's still a very wet grassland. And I'm looking for a plant which uh, is one of my favourite plants actually, which grows in just this sort of, this sort of habitat, wet meadows. Um, and here it is. Um, this is, as you can probably see, has tiny little yellow flowers again. It's springtime, so they're yellow. Uh, and once again, you need to look at them under your hand lens. And they're really pretty. You can see that they've got four yellowy green petals. Now, lots of plants have interesting English names. And I guess this is called Lady's Mantle because maybe the leaves you see the leaves here maybe they look a bit like a cloak i don't know perhaps they do but it's the latin name here which is absolutely amazing because the latin name for these plants is alcamilla this one is alcamilla alcamilla xanthachlora and i know it's xanthachlora alcamilla xanthachlora because if i turn it upside down and look at the, the stems of the leaves i can see that they're hairy and the tops of the leaves are bald and that's, this is the only one that really has that, um, that, those characteristics. Hairy stems, bald leaves. But the reason they're called Alcamilla is because they are the alchemist's plant. And if I was here early in the morning, and it had been quite chilly, and there was a really heavy dew as the sun came up, this plant would have hundreds of little dew drops on the leaves, shining like little, little orbs in the sun. And Alchemists believed that the plant actually exuded these little, little bubbles of <laughs> my phone going off. Um, these bubbles of water, and um, that was they believed that was a source of absolutely pure water. They didn't understand uh, the dew point of various other things, how they how the water actually got there. They believed it was produced by the plant, and so they would go around collecting it. So this is the alchemist's plant. It's Alchemilla. And I think that's just a lovely story. Um, and it has, really does have beautiful little flowers. So um, we're going to have a look at this um, uh, and uh, uh, see what it looks like close to. <coughs> and then behind me, I'll scramble a bit, is another typical springland plant. <coughs> now this often grows in woods actually, but here it's on a, on a hillside or a slope. And this is barren strawberry. Um, so I'm afraid it's not going to produce any strawberries that one can eat. 
Um, and you can see if you look at the, uh, the flowers that they look a bit like strawberries. Uh, they've got five white petals, but they've got big gaps between the petals. The petals have uh, quite a long limb, and then they, they fell out. Um, quite a big gap between the petals. But the secret is to look at the tips of the leaves. And if I look at the tips of the leaves, I can see that the, the little um, tooth right at the end of the leaf is shorter than the two on either side of it. And that tells me that this is barren strawberry. It's not absolutely foolproof, but it's a pretty good way of, of telling that this is a, a barren strawberry. Um, Potentilla sterilis is its Latin name. Sterile, of course, being barren. So, no strawberries, I'm afraid, but quite a pretty little plant and a, a classic springtime um, plant of this, this sort of area, and also in woodlands. Okay, let's move back down to the slightly damper plant part. Down here are some orchid leaves. Interesting. Quite sure which orchid it is yet. It's not flowering. It's got another four or five weeks to go before it flowers. I have to come back and have a look at that one. Now, what I really want looking for is this plant here. Now, it's a, a wetland plant. It likes damp meadows and if you're walking through a um, park area or, or some uh, grassy areas and you see this flower growing, uh, four petals, slightly pinky usually, uh, variable, then you'll know that it's wet, or at least damp. It doesn't necessarily have its feet in water, but it likes damp, and we're in a, a damp meadow. And this is a um, uh, so-called cuckoo flower, Cardamine pretensis in Latin, and um, it's a cabbage family, it doesn't look much like a cabbage, but it's in fact, this is related to cabbages, and all the cabbage family have these four petals in a cross. And the group, the family name is Cruciferae, because they have, a, they have these four petals in a cross. Um, this has quite a nice large flower, very easily recognisable. As I say, it's, it's a slightly pink colour, and with these rather nice, slightly darker, purpley veins. But next to it, here, is a tiny little member of the Crucifer family also related to cabbage, looks even less like a cabbage than the cuckoo flower does. And this is wavy bittercress. And there are two plants that look almost identical to this. Um, the, uh, I said in the previous film, um, uh, birders, people who, uh, who go bird spotting or twitching, um, uh, uh, refer to LBJs, little brown jobs, small brown birds, they can't tell one from the other. Well, bottoms have SWFs small white flowers and this is definitely a small white flower. This is wavy bittercress and they say there are two bittercresses which are this size, there are other ones that are larger, and the wavy bittercress I can tell because it has six anthers, five sometimes, usually six anthers, most of the male parts are produced in pollen. Uh, and the other one which is called hairy bittercress, which is actually very hairy, usually has four anthers. But I have to use my trusty magnifying glass to get down on my knees and, and have a really good look. Yes, six. So, wavy bit of grass. And this one, the um, uh, cuckoo flower is Cardamone pretensis, and this one is called Cardamone flexuosa. So they're actually really quite closely related. Okay, let's move on. Okay, well I've moved up to the, uh, the top of the field now to look at some, uh, some hedgerow plants. We've been having great fun filming uh, tadpoles in the fall down at the bottom just to prove that it really was a, a wet area. Um, this is a, a typical English hedgerow plant, this is hazel. Um, and if you look at the leaves, you see that they're very, very um, deeply veined. And that's typical of hazel. Unfortunately, it's rather typical of some other plants too, in particular witch elm. Um, the leaves look, when they're young, quite similar, but the trick to tell hazel, apart from the fact that this one already has hazelnuts on it, which is just a bit of a giveaway, of course early in the year it'll have catkins and little red female flowers, um, but the trick is to look at the leaves, and if the tops of the leaves are, have equal sides, then it's certainly not an elm. Well, elm leaves have asymmetric leaves, so one side is larger than the other. 
Whereas with hazel, they're both the same size. So even when it's young, you can tell it's a hazel if it hasn't got hazel nuts on it. And then behind me, and this is a native, although once again, this is, might be a guard to escape this one. Um, this is uh, a gooseberry. Uh, and we don't think of gooseberries as being native plants, but they're perfectly good native species. Also been cultivated for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, and to produce nice, big, juicy, green gooseberries, or probably red gooseberries. Um, this one is, is, uh, is probably a garden escape because we're in the middle of a, a field in the middle of a village, and uh, it's probably not a native. Um, and I suspect that generations of people have come past these and and pick them as they pick the few as they walk past, stuff them in their pockets to make gooseberry crumble after they've got home. So uh, this is our native gooseberry, uh, Rebe's Uva Crispa. Very nice name. Um, I'm holding it rather gingerly because gooseberries have rather nasty thorns, and indeed it's the thorns which um, are, can be very easily diagnostic because other Rebe's plants, and those are currants, it's related to currant, but they don't have thorns. Red currant, black currant, white currant. Flowering current, no thorns. Gooseberry, about well over a centimetre long, I can tell you they're jolly sharp. Okay, so this has been our slightly damp field day. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to do, maybe tomorrow or the day after, is to look at some, we go delve into the gutters and look at some walls and see all those places that plants get to where nobody's planted them. They've just really seeded themselves. Sometimes they're wild plants, sometimes they're plants that come in from gardens, uh, but they're lovely nonetheless, and they made their home in village walls and pavement cracks and places like that. I hope you've enjoyed it.